We're into the last section in this uh, wonderful book of Ecclesiastes. The sermon I preached on this section I called, If Only I Could End Well. Uh, this section will pull together many of the themes that we've seen in the letter up till this point, but we're also given in this section uh, the conclusion to the matter. But if you haven't already done so, I do encourage you to go and read through this passage a few times. Uh, look for some of the repetition of words or ideas that we've seen throughout the book so far. Spend some time praying that God would help you to see and understand wonderful things about Him and how this passage grows our hope as those who trust in Jesus as the one who ultimately gives meaning to our lives. If you are new to the channel, I encourage you to go look at some of the videos from the earlier sections in Ecclesiastes to help give yourself some context for the book. And subscribe to the channel and share the content with others who you think might find it helpful. This final section starts with uh, the, the last of seven of these uh, carpe diem or seize the day uh, sections that we've seen. Throughout the book, there have been these sections that have called us to enjoy life, uh, rejoice and be happy in the life that we're given, uh, find joy in this life under the sun. And so we'll dig into that in a moment, but just to see some of the repetition. So again, this word translated here as meaningless. Uh, just remember the, the word hevel in the Hebrew, uh, which means enigmatic. So it's more nuanced than just meaningless. It's just showing that life here under the sun is hard to grab hold of, hard to pin down. Now, Mr. Teacher started in chapter one by saying meaningless, meaningless, everything is meaningless. And he ends with the same idea. It's enigmatic. Life here under the sun is hard to pin down. We can't always uh, make sense of it. A few other things that we see repeated here. We've got uh, remember, remember, remember. In the first and last sections, we've got uh, this idea that judgment is coming. And something else we've seen repeated throughout the book is uh, the idea of taking to heart. And uh, here, yeah, banish anxiety from your heart. Uh, we see some repetition about uh, being young or uh, youth, youthful. And then there are a few verses that point us to God, the Creator. He's the one we are to remember. And we've seen this call a few times, fear God. And that's where his conclusion lands, that after everything has been heard and considered, the, the end imperative is to fear God. Now, I think the key imperatives in this section help us to see the structure of the bigger section. Uh, so this is the main uh, imperative in this section. And a better translation, actually, than be happy is rejoice. And the main imperative here is remember. And then the key imperative right at the end is fear God and if we want to just uh, think of this, alliterating uh, these sections, uh, we can see these big sections. Uh, this first section around the imperative rejoice, remember, and then just for another R instead of fear God, revere. So rejoice, remember, revere. And those who truly revere God, because this is the conclusion to the matter, and those who truly revere God will remember Him and rejoice in both Him and the life that He gives us under the sun, enjoying all the years that they may live. And just some other repetition we see. So we've got uh, the teacher repeated here. Uh, we met him at the beginning of the book. So the Hebrew word koalet. Uh, so we've got the teacher, and he's been imparting wisdom to us. And so we also see this a little bit of repetition here of something we've seen throughout the book of wisdom, being wise, uh, having knowledge. He also speaks of uh, people going to their eternal home. He speaks of different kind of days. So he speaks of days of darkness and days of youth. 
Okay, and in the days of your youth, before the days of trouble come. In this, when the keepers, it's in the day when the keepers of the house tremble. And then there's this repetition of before, before, before. There's something we need to do before the days of trouble come, before uh, the sun and the light and the moon and the stars grow dark, before the pitcher is shattered at the spring. Now, just as he's pulling all the strings of the book together, we've seen throughout the book that Mr. Teacher has tried to find meaning. He said, what's the point of life? And he's, he's looked at uh, work and money and pleasure and uh, so many other things to try and find meaning in life under the sun. And here in this section, he speaks to the young. Now, I think here he's not specifically talking to uh, teenagers or young adults. It's actually everyone who is before these days that we'll look at in a moment where where everything is deteriorating. So the, the last days of very old age. And he's saying before that comes, get your perspective in life right. And so the key command in this opening section, the command to rejoice, be happy, the imperative, you who are young, Rejoice while you're young. Let your heart give you joy in the days of your youth. It's a command from God to actually enjoy the light of life before the days of darkness come. So dark days are going to be hard, but he's saying get the foundation of your life right as young as possible because it's not going to get easier to rejoice and find joy in life. It's actually only going to get harder. But he does follow this up by saying, follow the ways of your heart, but know that for all these things, God will bring you to judgment. So what he's saying is enjoy life God's way. Don't just uh, seek joy, but seek joy in a way that will bring glory to God. So you're meant to enjoy life his way. And then he gives a number of other uh, imperatives under this big imperative to rejoice. He also says, uh, banish anxiety from your heart, cast off the troubles of your body. So he's saying, get it, get rid of them. Uh, don't dwell too long on the difficulties of life. And what is the best way that's going to help us to rejoice? Well, that is what we look at in the next sections, remember and revere. If we get these things right, it will help us to really rejoice in this life under the sun. And so he starts chapter 12 with this big imperative, remember, remember what? Remember who? Remember your creator. And this call to remember your creator is before the days of trouble come. So again, he's saying get the foundations of your life right before life gets hard. And in these verses here, he starts giving a, a picture of a house that is running down when the keepers of the house tremble. So that's like the arms that used to be uh, strong are now trembling and the strong men stoop. So that's uh, his legs. They're no longer strong enough to, to carry him easily. Uh, when the grinders cease because they're few. Uh, so that's a picture of teeth that are falling out. They, they can't grind food anymore. Uh, those looking through the windows are dim. So his eyes are now growing dim and the doors to the street are closed and the sound of grinding fades uh, so his ears aren't hearing as well as they used to. And then when the people are afraid of heights and dangers in the streets, the, he knows now that a uh, fall could kill him. Uh, the streets of Jerusalem uh, were steep and many things that he could trip on and for an old person, uh, he knows that a, a trip could be an absolute disaster, so he rather stays at home. And then when the old almond tree blossoms, so this is the white hair of old age, almond blossoms are white, and then the grasshopper dragging himself along, um, moving with real difficulty. So think of people in our world, old people uh, on their Zimmer frames struggling. Desire is no longer stirred, so his appetite's gone. And eventually, they go to their eternal home. So he's now at the funeral parlor, mourners going about the streets. So this is a description of very old age. He's saying, remember him before the silver cord 
is said, severed. This is probably a picture of, of a lamp hanging by a cord which is severed and the light drops and goes dark. Is this repetition of a broken, shattered, broken, and the dust returns to the ground from which it came. So you've got this idea of uh, Genesis 3, uh, the curse, from dust you came and to dust you will return. And the Spirit of God, the Spirit returns to God who gave it. So it's very clearly a picture of old age leading to death. And the big point is, remember your Creator before these days. It's not going to get easier to remember your Creator. So this main imperative is get the foundations of your life in place as early as possible because it's not going to get easier. And the key way to actually get those foundations in, in place is given right at the end of the book, fear God and keep His commandments. If you correctly revere God, then that will impact the way that you live life under the sun. And so the big point of Ecclesiastes as a whole is causing us, is saying don't just live life under the sun, actually fear God, lift your eyes to the one who made the sun. The tragedy though is that this is the problem that we see throughout the Old Testament, is that God's people couldn't rightly fear him or keep his commands. And so it's very good news for us that uh, Ecclesiastes 3, uh, 12 is not the end of the Bible, but actually we can look ahead to the God who made the Son, who then came in the person of Jesus to live under the Son, and Jesus also called us to remember. In Matthew 28, uh, right at the end of Matthew, he says, I remember that I'm with you always to the very end of the age, or in the Lord's Supper, Jesus said, remember me. Do this in remembrance of me. And so we don't only get to remember our Creator, we get to remember our Creator who became our Savior. And as we revere Him, fear Him, stand in awe of Him, as we remember Jesus, we will indeed rejoice in the life that He has won for us, we'll rejoice in Him, and He will cause us to live with true joy, uh, being happy in all the days that he blesses us with. And the big call of this passage is to get this right as early as possible, because it's not going to get any easier as you get older. And so as you reflect on this further, and as you seek to teach it to others, the big thing that we want is people to see from this book is that we should rejoice in life, but we'll only get this right if we get our foundations right, if we are revering God, holding Him in such high regard that He impacts the way that we live under the sun. And we need to remember Him and rejoice in Him all the days of this life until we go to our eternal home, the home that Jesus has prepared for us. Jesus said to the thief on the cross, Truly I tell you, today you will be with me in paradise. Our eternal home is with the God who made the Son and then came to live under the Son so that He could save us, so that one day we could be with Him forever. And so here is the conclusion of the matter. Fear God and keep His commandments. The way that we do that is to revere Jesus as we remember what He has done for us and rejoice in the life that He has won for us. He saved us from this judgment so that we could be with him forever. And so this book of Ecclesiastes is meant to encourage us. Yes, life is enigmatic. We can't always make sense of it. But in this enigmatic life under the sun, we can look to the one who made the sun. We can remember our creator. And as Christians, we can remember our creator who became our savior and we want to rejoice in him as we live these days in a way that will bring glory to him, fearing him and keeping his commands all for his glory. Well, God bless as you dig in further.